Hey, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming today. Um, I'm going to talk right now, but largely not. I'm going to be here moderating this fantastic panel of humans who are going to tell you why um, or how they have managed to run really successful meetings that are super fun and welcoming to attend. So I'll right away just ask if any of you would like to explain a little bit of what your aim is with this workshop panel to talk about. I would be happy to. <laughs> um, so I think Tabby started this idea um, and it was largely inspired because uh, the contributor comms team has weekly meetings, um, which we've luckily somehow roped Ian into attending recently. <laughs> and there are a number of things that we do in our meetings to try to make them very welcoming and inclusive, especially because our group is very, uh, a lot of our work is very welcoming to brand new contributors to Kubernetes. So we really want to be welcoming to folks who are totally new to the community. Um, and we put a lot of effort into making sure that we have processes in place to avoid accidentally causing someone to leave the project or something like that. <laughs> and uh, Ian, as a co-chair of SIG Security, um, who also runs a lot of meetings for open source and also tries to be very welcoming, uh, also had some suggestions for how we could improve our processes. And so we've been making some changes to our group on how we run our meetings to make them more inclusive, uh, more welcoming, and these things evolve over time. So we wanted to get together here on stage for folks here at uh, the Contributor Summit to talk about um, how we do that. Hi, uh, we didn't actually introduce ourselves. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ian. I am uh, one of the co-chairs of Kubernetes Six Security. Um, and I have been a community organizer for a very long time. Um, for, for most of my life, I would say my adult life, but actually for longer than that. And um, one of the things that you learn in doing a lot of community organizing work is how to, um, how to create space, how to create space that is welcoming or unwelcoming, how to create space where people feel like they can contribute or don't feel like they can contribute. And there are certain kinds of um, practices and processes that you can put into place to make it feel easier for people to get involved. And when we started SIG Security, um, one of the things that we did was make, sh we really wanted to create that culture on purpose. And everything that we do in SIG Security is done on purpose in order to create that kind of space. So um, yeah, Tabby, you wanna talk about any of that? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of related, like what you were saying, Kaslin, about how you have work that is very welcoming to new contributors. Um, in SIG security, there's a sheen that security is scary, difficult, only available for experts. And so we have put quite a bit of effort into dispelling that and making space for folks who may be very new or for folks who have experience that is somewhere else. And so the activities that we do within the meeting are a big part of that. Like people can come and bring the ideas and experience that they have and match up with other folks who may be there. And that's how things get done. And hi everyone, my name is Natalie Vlatko. I'm one of the co-chairs of the Kubernetes Special Interest Group for Documentation. Um, another very, very popular SIG uh, where new contributors come in um, and uh, want to make their impact on the project. Um, much like everyone already on the panel has said, uh, making it very purposeful to have inclusive meetings is something that we try to do. One interesting thing that we, um, is a challenge all the time, um, our time zones. Um, and so one thing that we're trying to concentrate on in docs is having more meetings at times that you, the contributors that we're trying to make sure we can help and mentor and, and, and chat to, um, have them at times that are actually more great and useful for them. Um, but it does always mean that sometimes some of us in the, in the leadership group, group have to have a late meeting now and then an eat that but it's a purposeful decision because we want to be inclusive for that for, the, for that uh, audience um, and then on top of that we always have especially on the SIG Docs bi-weekly call we have an area where we want to have folks introduce themselves if they're comfortable either by unmuting or in the chat that we have uh, uh, via the zoom platform um, to say hi who are you what would you like to achieve here? What are you, what are you looking to learn? Um, and do you want help now or later? How do you want to receive that help? We want to cater to you. 
basically. Um, we would try and make that very, very clear at the, at the first meeting a contributor will come to and at the 100th meeting a contributor will come to as well. So building off that a little bit, do you want to talk about rituals and patterns that you follow in your meetings to make people feel welcome? <laughs> so one of the things that we always do in SIG security is um, we introduce ourselves every time. I think it's common um, in a lot of SIGs and just in general for people to, if they have meetings that often have the same group of people come over and over, to be like, oh, we don't need to introduce ourselves, we all know each other. But what happens when a new person comes in to that meeting and then they don't, they don't know all of those people? Um, if it is not standard practice for people to introduce themselves, or almost worse, if it is standard practice for if a new person shows up and they're like, oh, you're new, can you introduce yourself? thanks. And then they don't introduce themselves. Then it's like the, the new person who is probably, you know, already at its sort of slightly, you know, maybe a little bit shy, already a little bit of, you know, image information asymmetry on the other side of it, they don't know all of those people, then that's scary. You're being put on the spot. You have to introduce yourself. Everybody's looking at you and you don't really, you know, you don't get to know anybody else. And so one of the things that we can do, it's simple, but it really matters, is make sure that Everybody does it every time. And that way we don't have to have the awkward debate if a new person walks in of like, oh, a new person, and then put that person on the spot in that way. It just is that way. And, and then jumping off of that, the way that we do it is intentional to make it happen naturally. So the person who is primarily facilitating the meeting just always starts that way. Um, another, another thing about like rituals at the beginning of meetings, the SIG security meeting traditionally starts three or four minutes after the time slot that is on the calendar there starts because there are plenty of people that have, you know, back to back brick wall kind of, kind of schedules. And so having a little bit of time to come up to the population that we're going to have before we get started, stops those people from getting cut off, and it also provides a little bit of more casual time for people to say hello to each other or whatever, but not so much that it slows down and gets awkward. And so then, you know, once it, the clock ticks over to four after or whatever, then the person who is facilitating can say, welcome to, you know, welcome to another Kubernetes SIG security. I'm so-and-so and introduce themselves. Another thing we do at SIG Security every time, and I promise I will pass the mic in a second, <laughs> is um, we have note taking on a rotating basis. Um, we don't have one person or two people whose responsibility it is to always take notes. And we have people volunteer to take notes every time, and not necessarily the same people. Because if you're a new contributor trying to figure out how to plug in, that's the thing you can do immediately. That's really important. And that way you can already like be doing something that's really like kind of central to what's going on there and you don't even have to have any experience for that. Yeah, it's something that we always do as well, going back to the topic around the introductions. Um, we uh, are just saying it very out loud, this is a very white panel. So what we do in SIG Docs is to make sure that um, from the introduction side, if we're saying people's names, I openly ask, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Please correct me if, if I'm not. Um, and, and that's something that I, I think is, as someone whose name does get mispronounced a lot too, um, is something that I like to try and do um, as much as possible. And we've actually asked if folks are comfortable doing so in, in Slack as their Slack handles, um, uh, there's an area um, in the Kubernetes Slack as part of your profile where you can add the pronunciation of your name. Um, and we've been trying to do that so that folks don't feel like they, um, it, can, it, can be a, it can be quite intimidating when you feel like you have to correct folks around the pronunciation of your name. And so we want to share all the resources that makes that easier so that that inclusivity keeps happening. Um, that's something that is, uh, um, I'm still always uh, tripping up on, even with contributors that are sometimes not so new. Um, and I like that um, uh, hopefully folks can feel comfortable that even as a SIG lead, I can be corrected too. And going back to what Ian was saying about um, having new contributors introduce themselves. I'd like to give you a uh, <laughs> example of perhaps doing things wrong. 
<laughs> so when we first started the Contributor Comms group, we are a subproject of the Special Interest Group for Contributor Experience. And Contributor Experience uh, has, over the years, run a wide variety of meetings, both the special interest group meetings, which at this point happen bi-weekly. We also used to run the community meetings, which were a monthly meeting anyone could come to, and they could be very large audiences. Um, so a lot of the SIG Contribex meetings have very varied audiences. Sometimes they are very experienced contributors, and there's basically no one new, and sometimes um, they are meetings where new people are encouraged to come. And so with this wide variety of uh, meetings, sometimes the processes at the beginning of the meetings changed. So when COM started, we had adopted a process that had been used in various other SIG Contribex meetings where uh, new folks would introduce themselves, which I think probably developed from meetings where there were a lot of people who were always on the meetings, uh, like a, a very large number where it would slow down the meeting if they introduced themselves every time. And so they had developed this process, and so we kind of adopted it too. But it didn't work well for our group group because our group um, is very oriented toward new contributors. Um, and it's not that large that it would take a whole lot of time for us to introduce uh, everyone on the call every time. So when Ian joined, they mentioned that this was something that they did in SIG Security of introducing uh, everyone every time. And we were like, wow, you know, that's better for our group than the, our current process. We can change that. <laughs> so it's very important to reassess as you move forward, even silly things that you wouldn't normally think about. Um, encouraging the group to speak up when they have a feeling about something that you're doing. Um, you might even notice that, not notice that it's a process that you're following, um, but you can always update them and make things more inclusive as your group changes. And one of the really cool things about doing like cross-sig collaborative work is that we get to learn from each other. Um, about how different SIGs do things. And then we get to, like, if they're doing something that seems cool, then we get to adopt it. One of the things I really like about the contributor comms meetings, SIG Security hasn't adopted this, um, but not for any particular reason, but I really like it, um, is that uh, people hang out at the end um, and then spend time together and talk about whatever it is that they're working on. And it, um, it's really nice. It, it, it's a time for people to get together and bond and talk about things that might not be necessarily squarely fitting within the meeting agenda, but it's really good and I think like helps community cohesion and I like that a lot. Yeah, 100%. I think the other thing that I wanted to mention around the rituals is that we also, uh, uh, as part of uh, uh, the Kubernetes uh, governance, we record all of our meetings to make sure that folks can watch them later. And we always make sure that we turn off the recording at the end and ask additionally if folks have questions or things they want to discuss off the recording, making sure that there's that space just in case there could be something that they don't realize um, could be useful and beneficial to be on the recording. They don't want to be on the recording with this question or the these concerns and so on, that's something that is a super important we try to include in every meeting too. Also, I think it's super easy to forget that we're being recorded because every SIG meeting is recorded. So I try to make a special point in all of our meetings to say, hey, we're welcoming in our friends on YouTube now. <laughs> and then at the end of the meeting, we're going to say goodbye to our friends on YouTube, but we can still hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Incentive so, to join the meeting as well. Yeah. <laughs> the after hours hangout. And and related to both introductions and the YouTube recordings, that like within Six Security, we do the introductions even on the occasional meeting when there are four of us and we all know each other personally because those meetings all get recorded and go on to YouTube. And so someone who is looking up information about something and however they do stumbles onto a SIG meeting recording and wants to learn something from it, there is a lot of important context like in a conversation about changing a feature or something, there's a lot of important context contained in who are the people having that conversation. And so even if you all know each other, the person six months from now watching the recording has no idea potentially who any of you are. And so the introductions at the beginning are, are good for that. And so that's, that was another part there that I wanted to call out. 
so getting beyond introductions, uh, we've talked a little bit um, outside of being on the stage, but about the balance of folks coming to these meetings who are quite busy and they're making time out of their day to come to the meetings. And you also have new contributors who might not have all of the context. So how do you go about balancing providing enough information for the new attendees while maximizing the time spent by regular attendees? Um, one thing that I, we like to do in SIGDOCs is that we have a very, um, uh, uh, we have a very, uh, how to say this, the agenda in terms of how it's structured is the same every time. Uh, we try and make sure that people understand that who are new or who aren't, or who are um, uh, long-time contributors in docs, they know if I join the meeting, it's gonna go like this, 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 and then we have the fun hangout time towards the end so that they know if I can only make it for the first 20 minutes, I know that we discuss issues in PRs first and then we go into free form discussion, which we how is how we structure it in docs. Um, and before that, we also so do always do an update on the release uh, that's currently ongoing because that's also something that's very important to docs too. So we try and have a very, uh, um, rip, uh, it's not consistent. Consistent, thank you. It's consistent and it's uh, um, uh, something that people can always count on because they know what they can expect or how much time they need to give. We think that's really important. I would say that our meetings are significantly less structured, which uh, is, I don't know if it's good or bad, but another example of how different groups can operate differently. So the beginning of our meetings are kind of pretty freeform. We have a notes section where we have um, new items and updates and big wins. And we just ask for updates from everyone who's there on all of those things. But then after that, we have a more structured portion of the meeting where we go into a board that tracks the progress of specific action items. Um, so we have an element of structure and an element of uh, loose discussion, um, and that works well for our group. I think that balance is really good. Like the SIG security meeting has kind of an in-between thing there where the, you know, the notes document is open for writing. You don't have to be a member of the mailing list or whatever to do that. So people can put themselves on the attendance list and now they have the document open. And so we have a, we have a template that, you know, the first person copies and pastes to start the notes for the new meeting. And then we have regular updates from each of the sub projects. And then after that, there's the things that the attendees have brought. And so, you know, sometimes folks will put an item on the agenda four weeks in advance because they know this is going to be an important thing to talk about. Other times folks will put a thing at the end of the agenda, 20 minutes into the meeting because somebody said something and they said, actually, let's talk about this when we have time. And that that mixture of having like a consistent overall structure with, with adaptive parts in it has been really good. I'd also like to highlight what I was prompting for a little bit is um, how we handle sub, sub project introductions now on SIG security. So SIG security, um, a lot of our work is done through our sub projects. We've got four of them with four different leads. And so the way six security meetings are set up is we start out with introductions, finding a note taker, and then go through uh, sub project by sub project report backs. So this is what this sub project does. Here's what we're up to. Here's anything that we need help with right now. And then we go to the next one, next one, next one. And then the agenda opens up. Um, and people don't even have to put that in 20 minutes into the meeting. Um, we open it up. We open up the floor for discussion um, when all of the things that are already written out um, have already been said. So if somebody has an idea or something occurs to them, there's always time to do that. And, you know, and we encourage people to do that in Slack too, because SIG security doesn't really have a membership roster. It's whoever shows up. And what we do is often the ideas that those people bring. So we try to keep it as open for people to be able to bring themselves and their ideas as possible. Uh, we have also four sub projects, um, and one of them is the website, which everyone believes is just all that Docs does in terms of everything is there. But we also have the localization sub project, which is a really important one to the point where they actually have their own monthly meetings because of those sub project leads often have to deal with processes that aren't always applicable to only English documentation. But then there are always processes that are applicable across all the languages of which we have 15 on the Kubernetes website um, to be able to, 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 to help kind of roll out. So we try and also make 
make sure that um, we're noting that, hey, if we want to do sub-project uh, updates in the regular bi-weekly meeting, which is when Seek Docs has them on Tuesdays, um, that's uh, absolutely possible. But if folks want to only, for the 45 minutes of time that they have, speak about their sub-project specific uh, concerns or challenges or things that they're trying to solve, um, they've got that space to do that. We're also recently encouraging that the smaller sub-project uh, localization teams have their own meeting if they wish, and we are offering those smaller teams, do they want this recorded to YouTube so that they can hopefully broadcast to new possible contributors that want to then come to their meetings and contribute to their docs. So that's something now that we're also opening up on the meeting roster. So um, as, as an inspiring, aspiring leader, and I'm sure there are more people in the audience that ha have this conundrum, I find often you get new voices, new faces in a meeting, and you want to give them the opportunity to speak. Often these, these quiet folks have some of the best ideas. Um, how do you manage making space for anyone to speak and encouraging people who might not naturally want to speak without applying that pressure or force or putting them on the spot? One thing that is very precious to me in that area, but that seems very low key when it's happening is during introductions. First off, if everyone or almost everyone is introducing themselves, then a new person who is shy, they, nobody gets called out for not introducing themselves, but if everybody else is doing it, it's easier for someone to do it too. And then, as the person who is facilitating the meeting, it's very powerful to have some positive thing to say to people when they introduce themselves. And that might be, it's great to see you again, you know, I know you haven't been here for six months. Or it might be, it's wonderful to meet you, thank you so much for coming. And like, even starting there by giving especially new people a positive, a positive response to their presence helps with that. One thing that I try to do as somebody who, um, who facilitates meetings is explicitly make space for people. So if somebody, um, you know, if we say, do we have any questions? We count very slowly, she counts to 10, I count very slowly to seven, but I think roughly the same amount of time. Um, and, uh, you know, make sure that, that's, that that space is there for people who are introverts, a little bit quieter, whose second language might not be, uh, whose first language might not be English, who needs an extra little bit of time to process. They get that extra little bit of time to do that. And also, um, and you know, when we notice people who speak more and people who speak less, one thing that you could do, and this is an ancient community organizer trick, is be like, okay, so can we hear from somebody, you know, does anybody who hasn't spoken as much want to say anything, you know? Like, okay, so we've heard a lot from, you know, we've heard a lot from Ian now. Ian does a lot of talking. Does somebody who isn't Ian want to say anything about this? You know, um, and then it, it, that doesn't necessarily put the new people on the spot. It might put the loud people on the spot, but um, but it helps open up space so that everybody has space to speak. One thing we do in docs is we, uh, as as, as co-chairs who are doing the meeting, we kind of we tag team on notes, but we also tag team on on um, staffing the, the the chat that is happening. And when we ask for introductions, we say, if you don't want to speak up, feel free to just put it in the chat. And in that chat, that chat is also there going, hi, welcome, Tavi, to the meeting. And there's a lot of uh, we we encourage like emoji reactions and those kind of things because not everyone wants to communicate by going off mute. So that's something that we always try and uh, use the chat as well. Of course, sometimes that can be hard to then keep up with both, but it's one thing that we know that we have to um, just try and help that kind of commu communication happen by meeting the people where they want to communicate. Whether it's public speaking on a stage or running a meeting, always pause for longer than you think you should. Yeah, quite a bit longer than you think you should. <laughs> okay, so we're getting close to the end. Um, we've talked a lot about all of the things to do. Are there any major to not do points that any of you have to share? <laughs> can, can I get excited about this one? The th my absolute least favorite meeting running thing is you have an agenda, you get done with the agenda. Okay, I'll give you all back six minutes. Because, like, the implication of that is 
all of us would much rather be somewhere else, and it is a gift to be able to leave early. Um, and like, when I am facilitating the SIG security meeting, I lean strongly into the opposite of that. The SIG security meeting takes as long as it takes. Sometimes it runs over time and we have to cut it off. Sometimes it's done in 15 minutes. Whenever it is done, I always close it with, after we do one last long count, is there anything else that anyone would like to bring up while we are all assembled here? We wait for it. No one responds. Well, that indicates that we have accomplished the things that we came together for. Thank you all so much for coming, and I'll see you next time. Uh, in my big no-no is don't cancel a, a meeting when it's supposed to be happening right now. And give a lot of ample uh, notice if a meeting needs to be cancelled and over-communicated. The amount of times I've turned up to a meeting and no one's there because I didn't know it was cancelled. <laughs> don't cancel at the last minute. Don't underestimate the new people. I'm so serious. Like, new people have so much valuable, like, experience and things to teach us. The newer you are, often the more valuable that is. They know what the pain points in the docs are. They know what's confusing about the things that we're saying. They're the ones who don't understand the acronyms that we insist on not spelling out. Like, the new people have really valuable feedback and things to say and ideas to bring. So, like, it's not all about the people who have been there forever. Like, really create space and, like, and let the new people know that you value them, because we do. And so that's time. Um, definitely, if you have any more questions, hop into any of the groups. We've got SIG Docs, SIG, SIG Contraback X, and SIG Security. And I'm sure you can find any of us around here over the rest of the week. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.